Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can add a number counter to DaVinci Resolve for your video clips. So when you want to have a text field with a rapidly increasing number or rapidly decreasing number, we can achieve that with some simple mathematical formulas. So the first thing we're going to need is a video clip or an image that we want to go ahead and add a text field with changing numbers inside of it to the screen. So I'm just going to take this clip over here and we're going to go straight to the fusion tab. So this is going to make it easiest to control the text field because when we look at uh, the text here, we're going to see exactly how it's going to be layered on top of this laptop in the background. So we're going to need a minimum of two nodes here. One is going to be a text plus element. Unless you need the 3D functions of all these nodes over here, you can probably just get away with using text plus and skipping needing a 3D renderer. So if you have media one in selected, we can go ahead and add in text plus, and that's going to immediately also add in the other node we need, which is a merge one node. The merge one allows us to combine two elements to feed to the output. So we can have the text on the screen as well as the base underlying image. So if you do manually add the merge one node, just note that the media one should be the yellow connection and then the text one goes on top for the foreground or the green connection. So now we need to go click on our text node and make some changes to the text. So we can just start by putting test in here uh, just to get an idea of where we're going to position the text. So we might want the text, for instance, to start counting on the middle of this laptop here. So I'm just going to use the gizmos for the text transform to position it roughly there. We may also want to go over to some other tabs like transform where we can add some shear to the text to make it look a little bit more like it's angled properly to align with the screen. So for instance, if I go here and I take the X shear and we angle it just a little bit towards that. So now it looks a little bit more like it's actually part of the laptop. Since this tutorial is just about getting the number counter to work, we'll just leave the text element without making some changes to make it look better. That's good enough for our purposes for right now. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is to set an expression for this text field. So an expression is going to allow us to change what's in the field based on some arbitrary calculations. So if we right click on the text field box, this big box here, and we add expression here, the text is now going to be controlled by whatever this expression says. So we can go ahead and get rid of this text test part. We don't need that anymore. And so what we're probably going to want here now is going to be a formula that also takes into factor the time of the video as it progresses for this effect. So we can go over to the internet and find some cheat sheets for some of the different elements we can add to the formula, such as time. So if you want to use time as a variable, you can just write time inside of your expression. So if we go over here now, we can write time as the expression just as a start. And now if we go to zero, we can hit play. And we can see that it is setting the time as the number of frames that have occurred for this effect. So as this is an increasing number, we can use that as the basis for how fast we want our number to go up. So for instance, if I want it to go 50 times faster than that, I can just take times and multiply it by 50. So that's star and then 50 after that. We go back to frame zero now and we hit play. And now our number is going up 50 for every single frame. Okay, so simple multiplication will work fine if we want it to be a linearly increasing number. But I would think based on the internet that usually when people do this kind of thing, they actually want it to go up exponentially. So what we could do is take the time and square it or even cube it. So if we square it, it's going to go up pretty fast. So we start at zero and after a second or two, we're already up to a thousand and it'll eventually get up to 10,000 and above that over a five, six second period. But if you want a really ridiculous number, we can cube it. So we go back to frame zero now, and then we hit play, and we should be able to get to several hundred thousand very quickly. So that's more of the number when you're trying to show like a subscriber count increasing, that kind of thing. The reverse of all this would be to have a number go from a very high number and then decreasing close to zero. So uh, what we could do is start with a very high number. So something like 500,000. So now to get it to go down fast, instead of multiplying it by time cubed, we can divide it by time cubed. I'll add parentheses here. Not sure if that makes an order of operation difference, but let's go ahead and hit play here. Um, and we can see it going very close to zero. 
are rather fast. One problem is that we get these long decimal trails, though. So we can take a look at this little expression cheat sheet, and we can get a function like floor or seal. If we want to round it up to the lower number that's whole, or the higher number that's whole, there may also be one that just rounds to the nearest. Let's go ahead and go with floor function. So to use the function, we just need to wrap this number inside of parentheses. So I'm going to control V, paste it in. So we have floor, the start of the parentheses, and so I'm going to move the right side of that to the outside over here. So this 500,000 or 5 million, whatever the number is, divided by time cubed, that all goes inside of the floor function. So after calculating this number, the floor function will just take whatever is the number that gets spit out of here and take it to the next lowest whole number. So now if we go here, we can go ahead and hit play and we can see the numbers do go very close to zero very fast, but the trailing decimal is dropped as the floor function reduces it to a whole number. And so if these numbers going down are a little too fast for you, we can always just take the cubing and change that to squaring, which is going to slow down the rate of change by a lot. So we go ahead and hit play here now, and we still go down very fast, but rather than in the tens digits, we end at about 300, 400, and most of it is in these thousands. So that may work better for your purposes. And in general here at this point, it's really just a matter of playing with the formulas and using the cheat sheet if we need to adjust it in any way. One other thing we can show for this video, not every, uh, not every number based text has to be a formula like this. So let's go ahead and remove the formula. So if we right click on the same text field, there's these other options you can have for controlling the value inside of here. For instance, uh, we can use time code if we want to show the actual duration of this clip. So if we add time code in here, uh, what you're going to see is frames on the right, seconds, minutes, hours for this video clip. So we can go to the start here and hit play, and you can see the frames are now being counted. So if we wanted to put that somewhere, we could just offset it and have it in a corner for our video. So that's one other way we can have a time-based text. However, if you wanted a time code or similar text to be based on the entire video project rather than this specific fusion clip, we could go back over to the edit tab instead. And now if we want to apply a timer or a number that's going to be across our entire video project, uh, maybe we're just showing the time of the video during the entire video, we can add an adjustment clip in here. So I'm just going to position an adjustment clip on video track two, and let's expand it to be the entire duration of the video. So an adjustment clip can be as long as you want. And now we would need to add something like a timestamp into here. So a few effects that you can use to go from here would be a DSLR. So if we hover over here, you can see a preview of that. Note that at the middle bottom, it's showing the timestamp of the uh, current project, the timeline. Video call, which also shows the time. Uh, but also puts a little border around the video and shrinks it to be in the center. Video call, which adds a border around the outside of the screen, but also note it has something of a timestamp in the middle bottom. And then a video camera, also similar, puts the time in the top left. However, if you still, however, if you still want to add a custom text field um, to this adjustment clip, which can be across your entire project, then you're going to want to go over to the Fusion tab once again. So in Fusion, we're going to make sure that we are selecting the adjustment clip in the uh, clips window there. So with media in one selected, we can add a text plus element like before. Maybe this time we change the font and the transform. Now on the layout tab, we can move it into the corner. So maybe somewhere like there. And I'm going to right click on the text field and make it a time code. So this is going to work nicely if we need the time code to be there for the entire project because we can make our adjustment clip as long as we need it to be and just stretch it across the entire project. Regardless of which clip we're showing, as long as the adjustment clip is above uh, all the other video clips, then this timer can show on top of things. Okay, so you may also want to get rid of this little one hour there. So the way you would do that is that you need to know your frame rate and then you can multiply that for 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes in an hour and then that'll get you the right number that you need to put in start offset to get rid of this so to know your frame rate for your timeline you can go up to file project settings you can see here it's 24 uh, you may have a different number like 30 so keep that in mind so i just need to take the start offset and i need to say negative 60 for 60 minutes in an hour 
times 60 for 60 seconds in a minute times 24 frames as the frame rate for our timeline hit enter and then that's going to calculate uh, the right number of frames to offset and get rid of that one hour now if we uncheck hours we are now looking at minutes seconds and frames and we could also turn off frames if we want to just show the minutes and seconds in our video so if i don't have that start offset you'll get something like this where it shows 60 minutes um, that's just how the time code shows in Resolve. It starts from one hour, even if you're actually at 13 frames into the video, not an hour. Uh, so that's why we just need that extra number there. So basically negative 3,600 times the frame rate of the video. And then you can get that kind of timestamp there. Uh, so now if we go here and we hit play, we'll have the actual number of seconds and minutes that our video has been playing with. If you see a little bit of lag there, uh, that's because of the fusion rendering needing a second because it's not cached. But when you actually export, it should be consistent with the actual time in the timeline up here. Before we wrap up, remember, if you added a time code to the first clip, go to the fusion editor, click on clips, select your underlying clip and then remove that text element. And by removing that, the text should no longer show there in the bottom left corner. So now the only timestamp is over here. Uh, we can still go into the fusion editor and adjust its position wherever you need it to go and we can go ahead and hit play watch it count numbers edit it where we need it to and that's basically in a nutshell a bunch of ways that you can have a text field reflect numbers based on the time of your video as the frames progress whether you want the number to escalate fast decrease really fast or just show time that's relevant to your video like the number of seconds that have elapsed so I'm Finn Chris. I hope you guys learned something from this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, and I'll see you guys in my future content.